When scientists talk about the impacts of climate change, rising sea levels usually tops the list. Now, a new report warns that increased coastal flooding as a result of these rising sea levels will decimate coastal property values around the country, potentially triggering a slow-motion economic crisis that will hit our region especially hard. According to analysis by the nonprofit group Union of Concerned Scientists, over the next 30 years, rising sea levels are projected to put hundreds of thousands of homes and commercial properties in the U.S. at risk of chronic flooding. The report warns that the increased flooding and the impact it's expected to have on property values could lead to a wider economic crash in coastal municipalities due to the loss of tax revenue. And joining us now to talk about all this as part of our Peril and Promise initiative on the human impact of climate change is Christina Dahl, one of the climate scientists behind the report. Christina, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. So, Christina, what exactly did you look at in your study? I know I mentioned briefly, but what exactly did you look at and what did you find? Sure. So we've known for a long time that sea level presents a huge challenge to our coastal communities. But this near-term threat to coastal property has really been flying under the radar. So what we did in this study is we combined property data from Zillow, the online real estate company, with an analysis we did that maps out the areas that would experience what we call chronic inundation, which is flooding that happens at high tide on average every other week as sea level rises. So by combining those areas that will face this type of flooding with the property data from Zillow, we were able to quantify the number of homes that are at risk uh, from sea level rise and high tide flooding and uh, the value of those properties and the, their contribution to the property tax base as well. So what we found is that in the relatively near term, just the next 30 years or so, to the lifetime of a mortgage, there are over 300,000 homes in the lower 48 that are at risk of this chronic flooding. By the end of the century, that number rises to about two and a half million homes and businesses that today are worth about a trillion dollars. So is this risk from flooding uh, being reflected in the current uh, property assessments of the real estate on the coastline? By and large, the answer is no. We do see some isolated real estate markets where this risk of flooding is starting to get baked into the market perceptions and the real estate market. But there are a lot of incentives and policies that are preventing this from fully being uh, reflected in real estate mm. market. Yeah. So what are the areas, what are the states most at risk of this physical and economic damage? So far and away, Florida and New Jersey are hmm. the two states at risk in the next 30 years. Each of those states has about 60,000 homes at risk by the year 2045. Uh, today, those homes in each state are worth about $26 billion. Uh, what about uh, the coastal areas around New York? Absolutely. So New York in the 2045 timeframe has about 15,000 homes at risk. Almost all of those are along the southern shore of Long Island. So we see a lot there. So play it out for us, Christina. If nothing or nothing much is done about this, um, what will it look like? And, and, and property and flooding, chronic flooding happens and property values fall. What follows? Well, we feel that some sort of market correction is inevitable. And whether that happens quickly and is a shock to the system or more gradually, remains to be seen. But as the risk of flooding starts to be reflected in property values along the coast, we expect to see properties becoming, uh, coastal properties becoming less valuable. And as they do so, that influences the amount of, uh, amount that they contribute to the local tax base. Right, well, I mean, and it will uh, reverberate throughout the economy. But, but listen, we only have a minute left, and I, I have to ask you, what do we do? What needs to be done to avoid this? Well, there's a lot that we can do. First and foremost, we need to be working on cutting our carbon emissions because the more that we can limit the long-term uh, risks of sea level rise, the better off we will be and the more homes we'll be able to spare from this sort of effect. But we also need to be preparing for the changes ahead by helping to reorient our policies and our market incentives to better reflect this risk. And quickly, do will we inevitably have to move away from the coastlines of, uh, that are in danger? 
for some communities, retreating from the coast may unfortunately be the best of bad options. Yes. But it's the time to prepare now and to start to develop some frameworks that communities can use to start thinking about their options, whether they're uh, whether that option is retreat or defense, building a seawall or accommodating the rising waters by opening up space along the coast. You know, we need to be helping communities to explore those options and ultimately to fund them as well. All right. Well, Christina, that's all the time we have. Thank you so much for joining us today to talk about this. Thank you so much. Thank you.